thanks to the supporters of channel member Nick Collard. Well, this maybe isn't going to be as straightforward as I first thought it would be. Finishing sixth last year and not qualifying for the Champions League means that nobody wants to join us. So although we've got loads of money to spend, loads of spare wage budget, we are really struggling to attract the quality of player that we need to actually improve this team, which is a problem. Hello and welcome to Club 5, part 2 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first ever game in charge of Juventus. A tough away game against Milan. That's a Milan team who are predicted to finish above us. They're one of only two teams that are predicted to finish above us. And they also have more representatives in the Dream 11 as well. So Milan away, likely to be a problem. What's also a problem is the lack of transfers that we've been able to do. A month has passed since I picked up this job. And you can see we are still trying, but we've been able to do very little. We've cleared things out a little bit. We've managed to sell off um, a few of the fringe players that we're not going to be using and loan out a few of the youngsters that need some game time. But actually, in terms of bringing people in, we've signed a player on loan from Manchester City and one of my reserves from Barcelona. And that is it. This guy was already here when I arrived. So this was my first signing, Junior Mansaray. He is a Dutch international centre-back off of Manchester City. Um, he's he's very good. I mean, we've got him on loan for the season. If we win Serie A, in the unlikely event we win Serie A this season, we've got to pay him £13 million as a bonus for us winning Serie A. But otherwise, we've just got him on loan for the year for £1.8 He actually played 29 games for Manchester City in the Premier League last year. Not quite sure why they've loaned him to us. Uh, we, don't, we weren't able to secure a future fee but he is currently valued at 26 million, which I think is because he's on the transfer list. So if he works out good, we'll sign him permanently. That's the plan. And um, he is a nice, quick centre back. And bearing in mind the two centre backs we had were both slow old men, he's exactly what we needed to freshen things up at the back and slot straight in as one of the better centre backs at the club as well, competing with Bremer and Anal for a starting spot. And then the other guy we've brought in, Salvatore Boatini, who, of course, we signed for Barcelona last summer to be a long-term uh, addition to that midfield with De Jong and Pedri and Gavi. And he never really broke into that midfield, as you would imagine, only starting two games for us. But he had been a regular player for Inter for the previous three years back in this league. Um, although, to be fair, has never started more than three games in a season. But he's played over 100 Serie A games, largely from the bench at 23 years old. Um, he's a natural at both centre-back and central midfield. Central midfield was definitely the weakest area in the squad, so we needed to bring someone in uh, to offer some depth there. And Boatini, being Italian, um, it just made sense to bring in an Italian. He is now considered our best defensive midfielder and one of our best central midfielders as well, so he's likely to get a lot more game time here than he got at Barcelona. Although, as a player, he was going to play as a tough-tackling central midfielder with an aggression of 20, I don't think he's going to play every match this season. I suspect there might be one or two suspensions in that boy's future. But we really did try to bring in other players. In particular, we headed to Barcelona to try and raid the club that we know is in financial problems. The only thing is, as soon as I left, all the, remember all those lovely low transfer values that they had? They all went up as soon as I left. So Sukuna, for example, who they were going to force me to sell for 30 million, is now on the market for 71 to 86 million. And when our best player and probably the best player in Syria is our lone striker, Vlaovic, it didn't make sense to spend all of our budget on a striker, even if he is the best striker in Europe, because we've already got Vlaovic. There's other areas of the team that need an update first. Agostini's another player who would have made sense. Um, he's an Italian international, 23 Italy caps at 22 years old. When I was still there, he was in the 20 to 30 million pound range. I leave. What do you know? He's going to take our entire transfer budget. So lots of players like that we weren't really able to go for. We did try and sign Julio Aspas, who, I mean, even he, I mean, you see he's gone to Liverpool. Even he's gone for more money, way more money than his value was when I was still at the club. Um, but we actually made an offer for him before Liverpool even went in for him. Um, I think it was like a 35, 40 million pound offer. Barcelona did accept it. Aspas refused to even discuss terms 
because Juventus are not in the Champions League. And we had that issue a couple of times over the course of the summer as well. We even went back to try and raid Preston, not even for a player that I signed, a player that they brought in to replace all the defenders I took to Tottenham um, out of this Preston team. We were after this guy, Christian Herrera, who's a 23-year-old Spanish, uh, not yet Spanish international, Spanish under-21 international, a six-foot-five centre-back, again, with fantastic physicals, big, strong, quick boy, um, but he chose to go to Bayern Munich rather than coming to Juventus because Bayern Munich are still good in the Bundesliga, whereas Juventus apparently no longer good. So we hit, we hit that trouble time and time again, which means with 10 days to go before the transfer window slams shut, we still have a transfer budget of 90 million. Pretty much our entire transfer budget is still remaining after all of the players that have left and we cashed in a few a few clauses as well. We've managed to trim the wage budget down nicely. So there's over a million pounds a week spare in the wage budget as well. If we can find players, we definitely have the money to bring them in. But the problem we're having is any player that we find is either so expensive that he's going to take the entire budget. And I am, after what happened at Barcelona, trying to be a little bit more financially responsible. I don't want to accumulate a load of transfer debt here. Uh, the Boatini deal, uh, the vast majority of it, in fact, all of it, I think, was paid up front. Uh, we didn't mess around with any kind of uh, any kind of instalments or anything for him. We just paid the fee, and we're going to try and behave with that kind of thing here at Juventus so we don't create another financial problem. But it does mean that when we look at the players who we could potentially bring in, the ones that are actually good enough to improve us cost an enormous amount of money. Agostini is a perfect example. We could go and get Agostini. I might still go and get Agostini because he can play anywhere across the back four, which is handy because our fullbacks in particular are quite weak. Our defensive midfield definitely could benefit from having Agostini sat in there. So it might be that if we get to deadline day, we'll just go and blow most of the budget on Agostini. And that's fine. He'll definitely improve us. Um, but all of the players we could bring in are either going to take a huge amount of money and I'd like to bring in more than one or two players. I want to bring in a, like four or five so I don't really want to spend 70, 80, 90 million in one go. Or they just won't discuss terms with us. I mean, I'm saying we could go and get Agostini, but who's to say we can? Barcelona are in the Champions League. He's a regular starter for Barcelona, a regular starter for Italy. I mean, is he even going to want to come and discuss terms with us? He was previously at Atalanta when he was in Serie A. So he's got no loyalty to Juventus. In actual fact, he might... He might might not be a big Juventus fan. So we don't have that huge pull. We don't have Champions League pull. And he is now in the Barcelona team as regular starter. So that's troublesome. And then the other players we could potentially bring in are up-and-coming youngsters who, I mean, yeah, it's great to bring in some up-and-coming youngsters. We might end up doing this, but we really wanted to bring in some players who could come in and improve the team immediately. I mean, Tahir Temel at Barcelona is another one. I'm looking at thinking, I mean, we do need another midfielder probably. He is young. And he would, imp he would improve us. But I don't necessarily just want to go back and raid Barcelona for a load of players who weren't getting in my Barcelona team. Because that's the thing. We've already got Boatini. If we get the other midfielder who barely played when I was there, all we're really doing is confirming to all the world that we've joined a team that's not as good as the team we've just left because we're bringing reserves from there to come and play first team now. I'm kind of, I think, talking myself into trying to sign Agostini. So let's have a chat to his agent um you'd expect to be a start so he's not saying no he's extremely curious about making a move to juventus that is uh that's good to hear i'm ecstatic to hear you're a fan of carmines i mean i did i did invent him so of course i'm a fan um can we push his salary down a little bit uh, not really right um what i think i'm going to do in the interest of going full italian we're going to ask my director of football to negotiate that offer because if I do it, I'm just going to stick it all on instalments. And like I say, trying to be a good boy. Let's see what my director of football can put together. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just the head coach here. Perhaps I need to get a track suit rather than, rather than the suit and tie to go with my shirt. That came very quickly. Good work, Juventus. That's been the easiest shirt to find I've had this year. Um, straight off the Adidas store. But um, yeah, maybe we bring in Agostini. But like I say, if we do, that's, that's probably that. And then we're not signing a backup striker probably need a backup striker let's go play ace i don't know why this screen keeps messing up it never did at barcelona 
Let's go play AC Milan. So this is our team for Milan. We do have a little bit of an injury problem at the back. Bremer uh, picked up an injury. Um, in fact, both Bremer and uh, and Anal have been injured for parts of preseason. As has as have both Vlaovic and Alvarez. So in key areas, we've been uh, we've been missing a couple of key guys, which is not ideal. But we do have Leone who can come in and play at the back alongside Anal for today, while uh, while Bremer. In, while Bremer comes back to uh, full fitness. And this is our team. Very, very similar to the setup we played at Barcelona. And we've got Diogo Costa in goal, a back four of Lopez, who at 30 years old has never played for Spain and is probably someone who is definitely due an upgrade. Uh, Leone, the uh, young Brazilian centre-back, who we are probably going to have a lot of game time to this season, possibly even becoming our left-back uh, once we get these uh, centre-backs all squished into the team alongside Anal and Porro as our attacking, bombing forward right back on that side. Exactly my kind of fullback. We've got Locatelli at the base of the midfield, who at 34 now is very much going to be playing the De Jong role that we had at Barcelona, where he's just the old man who sits there in front of the back four and hopefully just sprays the ball around. I don't think he's going to be able to do the job quite as well as De Jong, but he might offer a little bit more defensive protection than De Jong did as well. So we'll... Uh, We'll see how he gets on in that role. Obviously, we've got Boatini who's just come in, who could play there, could play further forward. Um, and we might end up bringing in Agostini, who will play there if he comes in, um, unless he forces Porro out of the side, which he probably wouldn't. And we probably won't sign him anyway. We've then got Zabalazai in uh, in midfield alongside Baturina. They could play either way round, really. I think we probably need someone who's a little bit more of a, a specialist central attacking midfielder. I mean, Baturina can sort of do it. Um, so Balazai can sort of do it. I've, I don't know. I think both of them I'd rather have in that role and have someone a little bit more flair player -y, maybe. This is where you're going to start quoting attributes at me, aren't you? He's got 15 for flair. He's got uh, 16 for flair. Kev wants more flair. Yeah, I do. It'll be fine. Uh, and then on the left, we've got Fabrice, who it's inexplicable why he's not been playing for Juventus. For the last several seasons, he played 26 times that year. The following year, he didn't play a single game for Juventus. Still played six times for Italy that season. And then another year of not playing a single game for Juventus. And by then, he's fallen out of the international setup as well. So he's not played for two years. There's not been a serious injury in there. He's never had a serious injury in his entire career. The longest he's ever been unavailable for in his entire career is nine days. Cue him doing his crucial ligaments in this match. Um, but I don't know why he's not been playing. It's just weird. It's really, really weird. Um, but he is a right footer who can play on the left-hand side. He's quick. He's skillful. I think he's going to be an absolute superstar. I don't know why he's not been playing. So he's going to play on the left. Chiesa, our captain on the right, another of the old man brigade. And then, of course, Vlavic up front, who is uh, the free-scoring superstar of Juventus for the last 10 years or so, who we need to continue at the top of his game for at least another year if we are going to have any chance of any kind of success at this club, because he's our only truly elite player at the moment. And for a team like Juventus, we probably do need more than one truly elite player, especially when you're playing against a team like Milan, who have several who are in that Dream eleven and are real top-level players. Tonali, uh, De Ketelier is in there as well. There's a few others who uh, are players who become really, really very, very good in football manager Tomori, as another example of one of those. I mean, it's an ageing side. Kalulu, I think, is in the Dream Eleven as well. Um, it's an ageing Milan side, similar to how we've got an ageing side here at Juventus. But theirs is an ageing side that probably is of a higher level to begin with. And Diogo Costa really not selling himself to me there. People have told me a lot, especially on stream. Whenever I'm looking for a goalkeeper, his name always comes up. And... Uh, I mean, I'm not convinced based on the first three minutes I've seen of him. Get Dennis Simon on the phone. I think he's I think he's gonna be a, a three club player for me. Goodness me, that was that was poor. What do we do? How do you respond to that? Yeesh. And Locatelli has now picked up a knock as well. So that immediately is gonna change how we do things in this midfield because Boatini's gonna come on and literally just be a destroyer in there. And we'll play him as a ball-winning midfielder. And then I think we'll move Zabalazai to being the playmaker. Which I did. I was very close to playing this from the start anyway. The reason I went with Locatelli as a deep-line playmaker is because if Agostini comes in, um, then he could just slot straight in there and do the deep-line playmaker role that he was doing 
in the final six months or so of my spell at Barcelona, and we know he can do that very well. So it just means the rest of the midfield is more settled and we're not constantly shuffling around for different players as they come in. And Boatini could be the box-to-box further forward. And Costa is all over the place. Again, this defence does not look defensively solid. And I may have promised we would be defensively solid. Tonali with the corner for Milan, and it's headed clear, uh, but only to another Milan player. And they're going to try and get this ball straight back into the penalty area again. Tonali's got space to go past Lopez. Who, I mean, that's actually a very good tackle from Lopez. I said before the match that I wasn't particularly keen on using him, but he did well there. Um, and that is a good ball forward from Fabris. Um, it's back to him from Vlaovic and now Baturina. Lopez, this is a nice attacking move. Fabris, oh, that would have been a beautiful way to announce himself back in the first team after two years in the wilderness. But it comes back off the crossbar. Juventus fans are wondering who he is. It's like having a new signing. I can only assume he fell out with the previous manager, but I've never seen a player completely frozen out like that. I could understand if he was non-EU and it was a squad registration thing, but he's homegrown at club. He came through the Juventus youth system. He's Italian. There's no reason why he couldn't have been registered every season, which makes it all the more baffling that he never played. And now Milan have gone 2-0 up. And we talked a little bit about this being a problem when, because I've been using this tactic a little bit in my stream save as well. And we've, uh, We've recently taken over at Sporting Lisbon and I used this this system there. And when we first arrived there, we had a bit of a discussion about how this system works really well when you're Barcelona. When you're the best team and you've got the best players, this system really gets, gets good performances out of the best players. If you go up against a team where you're, where you're not the best players, where you are second best on paper and you try and play this system... This can happen, and uh, it, it's happening. I don't think there's going to be many times this season where we're second best on paper, but probably away against Milan is probably one of those times. Boatini's done very well there uh, to win the ball back, and we're scrambling the ball to safety, and there is Vlaovic, who, I mean, wants to be a pressing forward. I've got him playing as an advanced forward, mainly because I've not managed to get a good performance out of a pressing forward on FM23 at all. I've tried it in a few different saves, it's just not a it's not a player role that has worked for me at all. Um, so we're trying him as the advanced forward. It, that doesn't seem to be working for him. So we might switch him to be a pressing forward in the second half and see if he has a little more joy. Milan have hit the crossbar now and Poro scrambles it clear off the line. We have been really very poor in that first half. Let's change Vlaovic to be the pressing forward um, and see if... Uh, See if we can get more of a tune out of him. Ah, oh, there is. I mean, this really emphasizes the need for some fresh players in this team. We need at least one more midfielder. Um, I think we need at least one more defender. We need an attacking option as well. We might need a goalkeeper. This is what I mean about wanting four or five new players. Fabrice has got the ball in the back of the net, but I think it's going to be disallowed. Um, although he's running back to the halfway line as if he knows he's scored, and it has been given. So he has scored on his first game back out of the wilderness. I mean, it's, it's a header. It's not quite as impressive as the one he had from range, but he's going to be my boy. He's going to be the poster boy for new Juventus. Whatever grudge the previous manager held with him, whatever reason there was that he wasn't in the team, we're forgetting it. He's one of our best players, certainly our best young player. And we are going to use him. Vlaovic nods the ball down to Chiesa, who plays it back to uh, Boatini, who's in space. Baturina now fouled, I think, on the edge of the area. Well, apparently not. And now it's with Lopez. This has been much better from us in this second half. I guess changing Vlaovic into his natural position has done wonders for everybody in the team. Um, but now it's Milan trying to hit us on the counter-attack. And Porro is out of position because he's been charging forward, supporting the attack. And Rafael Leal is quite good. And Zabolazai, I, <laughs> I mean... That's why we're playing him further forward. He's not He's not the best in the tackle there, is he? And it's a penalty. I mean, it's obviously a penalty. And what do you know? It's a penalty. Right, Costa with the opportunity now to redeem himself after a very iffy start to that first half. If he can make a penalty save here, it's going to drag us back into this football match. And he does make the save! Well, Costa has gone from villain to hero in one match and hopefully the comeback is on. It is a corner from Milan. That was a very, very good penalty save. And Zabalazai is the one who's got under the ball again there, heading it clear. Milan still hovering around on the edge of the area, but that's a very tame shot into the hands of a rejuvenated Costa. 
fresh off of a penalty save, we forgive him for everything that went on in that first half and just assume that it was a little bit of a blip and he'll be fine from now on. Milan knocking the ball around at the back and we don't know how good they're going to be at that. I mean, they've moved it around us pretty easily and now they are charging down our, our weak side defensively because Porro is pushing so far forward and they're getting a lot of space down this right-hand side of ours. This time they've moved it over to our left though and drilling the ball across and between Costa and I think that's Anal. They managed to scramble it clear and Fabrice now playing it forward looking for Vlavic who, I mean, didn't look interested. Vlavic has been the poorest player on our pitch so far. Um, right, Porro on the right-hand side plays it into Anal and now Sabolazai and Porro again. Just, come on, let's, let's go and have an equaliser. A draw here would be fantastic in the circumstances. Vlavic to Fabrice. Tries to give it back to Vlavic, who just seems so slow. I don't know if Vlaovic is my kind of striker. Uh, I, I just don't think he's going to fit the way I want to play my fast-paced attacking teams. Although, he's a finisher and he has scored a goal there. And we forget, he's had two players we've written off and then forgiven. Did he manage to stay on side? The referee's got his finger in his ear. He's checking with VAR. And it's disallowed. Vlaovic is done. Move him on. Does anyone want Vlaovic? I'll swap it. I might swap him for Sakuna. But he'd fit, he'd fit in lovely at Barcelona. They love an old man up there. Um, right. What can we do to try and drag ourselves in towards an equaliser in this match? The ball is I, well, I, I'm pr fairly confident I'm mispronouncing, so we should probably get him off the pitch anyway. Um, we've got... Hold on. What have we got on the bench? Paolo Gervasio is okay so he is a six foot four attacking midfielder all right hello there young man i mean we might just and we've had this tactic that we're training so let's 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 have a fiddle let's do this um you are an inverted winger but that allows you to play in that role maybe this works we probably don't want you on attack we still want to be attacking as a team. And we still need my set piece instructions on. So let's just load my set pieces. They are available as a pack like this on the Steam Workshop. If you want to just be able to load my set pieces in the way, the way we just did. But let's try this. Why not? I mean, we should probably make another change as well. Vlaovic, we've, I mean, we've only got Julian Alvarez as another option who... He is quicker. But he doesn't suit this tactic change away Vlaovic will I feel like we should probably give Vlaovic 10 minutes and he's not actually I mean he's actually not that so he just looks so slow on the pitch um right let's get the new boy Mansare on he can come on there and we'll leave Vlaovic on for 10 minutes Alvarez is there ready to come on if need be we're going to demand more and hopefully we're going to find an equalizer from somewhere but it is Milan who are on the attack again which is not ideal cross comes in um, it's sort of dealt with, but there's the big boy, six foot four Gervasio. What a, I mean, what an imposing physical presence he is lurking around the midfield. I could, uh, I could get used to that boy very, very quickly. When I was, when I was examining the squad, I didn't realize he was six foot four. Probably should have had a closer look. Right. Chiesa is shattered. So we might have to bring Alvarez on wide. Although, oh, he's rubbish. Oh my, he's quick, but he is rubbish. Let's get Alvarez on out wide on the right side, which is where I do anticipate using him more than up front, which is why I want to bring another striker in. Um, and then Porro can come off. Maggioni is a right back. He's a young, very good right back. Okay, so let's get him on to play there. And uh, Vlaovic gets to play the full match, but he has not impressed me at all. Maybe maybe there's still time for him to, to impress me somehow. Maggioni plays it forward. Uh, Gervasio, the big boy, is uh, is chasing things down up front, but doesn't get there. And, oh my word, Milan have just cut through us as if we forgot to play a midfield there. And it's Gakpo on the right-hand side, cutting in field. Nobody's even trying to make a tackle. Costa has managed to get fingertips to it. I did not believe, after those first couple of minutes, that Costa would end up our best player on the pitch today. But he is, according to those ratings so far. Now, Vlaovic... I mean, it's such heavy control, but he does come away with the ball. I mean, he's just kind of muscled his way through there. 
No, nothing fancy about it. It's just muscled his way through. Gervasio, the, the six foot five midfielder, tries an overhead kick from outside the box. What is he up to? Um, I mean, this hasn't been disastrous. The XG for Milan is terrifying, uh, but they have had a penalty as part of that. There's been a couple of goalkeeping howlers. There's a lot of work for us to do. I don't know that we necessarily looked any better with the tactical change there. There's definitely players we need to bring in. And I just don't know that we're going to be able to get them in in time. <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow, I guess. But we'll come back for somewhere. We'll probably we're not going to go far. We'll come back. We'll come back somewhere around here. Hopefully, with a new player or three. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.